All right, welcome to this War of Rights map briefing. This one's going to be Eastwood Skirmish. This is different than East Woods. I personally am an East Woods Skirmish enjoyer. I think that this map is fairly well balanced, even though maybe it seems like it shouldn't. It's really interesting in what the Union can, can bring in terms of the uh, penalty of weapons. They have good ranged options. They have good close range options. It's a relatively congested area of, of fighting. It's, it's going to look bigger than I'm trying to make it look, but it, if you could see that tree right there, sometimes people refer to that as, well, it, it doesn't matter what they refer to it as, but the, the point of contention is it's near this clump of trees here, although remember the point is actually, it's not only that point, and so it's in and around that point, and you'll know it because if you hit T, it says capturing or defending, and if it doesn't, then you're not on it. But I would say that most of the fighting takes place from that cornfield in the shallow woods there, kind of between the cornfield and the point of contention, out up to this T junction, and then over at uh, this junction, I guess, of, of the roads. Uh, anyways, this is a Union attacking map. It is also a attacker uh, artillery advantage map in that the defender has no artillery at all. So the Union has this four gun battery off here. Two Napoleons, two three inch. It is an easy, I think from almost all these guns, you can just start up right away and uh, you can uh, start plinking the point if you want. The boundary, it's a bit odd. You can't quite use the fence up here, but there is, in this open field here, there is this set of rocks here, and then you can, as the Union, make it up and over into this snake fence, and that then takes you to the cornfield, and it's a straight fence, yeah, it's a straight fence here. It doesn't go out too much for, yeah, that, that actually feels right. Sometimes I think the, the can here in spectate is not quite what it actually is for the attackers, but there's that. There is a, a cornfield, which when you're running through it, for some reason, this one feels like it goes on longer than, than, than Miller's, but anyways, uh, there's that, and uh, all right, I'm getting ahead of myself, but that is the artillery situation. The CSA has no artillery on on this map, so there's no Grand Theft artillery or anything like that. Now, artillery can be its own X factor. I think one of the interesting things is, and we are right around Union spawn now, is that the Union spawn with a really interesting mix of weapons. They have uh, sharps, and a different group is one of those Union groups that can bring 1842s. And so they have a really good ranged option, shooting option with the sharps, and then they have a really good close range op option with the 1842s and with, with buck and ball. So as with almost all these maps, uh, we're gonna take a look at the pushes the attackers can do. There's a left side push, there's a right side push, there's a kind of straight up the gut push here that's more viable than it is on some maps. And so, uh, and, and these are pretty easy. So let's let's go ahead and do them. So the left side push coming out of Union Spawn is to pretty much follow this snake fence up. This tree right here is kind of an island that more or less marks the boundary for both sides. The CSA, by the way, can run up here. They'll flirt with uh, timing out, but they can run up here, so don't think that you're completely safe if you are. But this is kind of your your boundary marker of of uh, where you can go. So it's pretty much the two snake fences uh, for, for both sides. Anyways, the Union will follow this up. There is a, a, a bit of a defilade here that will provide you cover if the CSA is hanging back in the fence that is there. Again, that lone tree, there's a T-junction of the snake fence and maybe a straight fence. Actually, I think it's two snake fences. We'll see in a minute. And then the Union come up here, they'll use the snake fence as some cover and they'll push for this junction. And once they get up here, the Union can do quite a bit because in order to retake this position, either the CSA has to push along that snake fence. If they try to push through the open field, well, it's probably gonna go about as well as you could imagine. The, the defenders will have to pay a pretty heavy ticket toll in order to do that. The Union can push further back. That cabin is not garrisonable by either side uh, but there are clumps of rock yeah i always get these confused i'm not I, I think you could probably pass through here but it's this clump of rocks back here that the union can get into with the tree here and the union can also push i believe into the shallow part of the tree line back here i actually don't know how deep it actually goes for the union i don't think it's too deep but they can push pretty far back here uh and then there are these a few spattering of rock clumps here in the field, which if you can get in them, right, if you're willing to pay the cost up front, and as the attackers, you do have the tickets advantage, if you're gonna pay the cost to get in them, uh, you can make the 
in this case the CSA defenders pay a pretty heavy price in that they have to come back through an open field in order to take them and if you have some groups who are skirmishing up here perhaps with sharps and, and they need to pull back you can always have groups with 42s or other things uh, who could back them up in case the CSA over pursue uh, there's there's a lot you can do it's also a bit of high ground and it is ground that is not far from the, the point of contention. And so holding this junction right here, it's key for both sides because as much as the Union want it, the CSA can get there first. The CSA, for their part, they will start. I think this bush right here is about the timeout spot for the CSA. Uh, but they can stack a lot of folks wide and shoot into the Union as the Union comes down that uh, snake fence. As the, they get closer, they're going to be more open to, to, to being shot inside. And then they can try to melee uh, down anybody who, as they come over. Uh, I, I don't think I've said this yet in any of the other videos. I'm not sure exactly what order they're going to go up. In, but when you're defending a fence or a wall, the most effective tactic I think that has ever been invented as a basic rifleman, if you have a bayonet, and even if you don't, it doesn't matter, is to step back and make the attacker, whoever is attacking in, in this exchange, make them come over to get you. And, and you want to shoot while they're still a ways away. Now, if they have their loads, they're going to come up and shoot you point blank. It is what it is. That's why you have flags and they spawn people in and you'll be right back. Uh, but if you shoot and then reload and they volleyed and then charged, which I'm not, a, not usually a huge fan of, uh, that means if they come over the fence and you have your bayo on and you're in melee mode, you just break reload and then you stab them. You'll probably stab them once before they hit the ground. If there are two or three of you around, you can just do it all in one motion. You'll come back as the next person comes over. Melee again, you'll, you'll knock them down. And then in between people jumping over, you just continue to reload. You don't, don't just sit there. If you don't have a load, don't just stand there in melee mode. Stand there and be reloading. And now you've put the person on the other side on the fence in a predicament. If they come up and over, you're gonna melee them before they get down or you're going to kill them before they kill you uh, or you're going to win the reload race and you're going to shoot them down and so that's what you always want to be doing is just eking out these little tiny advantages so take a couple steps back in these snake fences you can run up to the i think that's the vertex i i don't know i'm not a map guy and you can stab further than you would think so when in doubt step back and make them come come over to you make them hop over or win the reload race and shoot them down Again, if you're the Union, you want to be really cagey about this, and you got the 42 and you got bucking ball, be at the back of your charge. Because the guys in the front are going to get shot first, and probably all of them. And then your goal is to get the payoff on the back end when you step up. And that's why I always think officers on the attack should come in either in the middle or the back of their line. Give your boys the line, and then you know follow them in and, and clean up. No sense in wasting your six-shooter by being the first person shot because everybody's going to be targeting you. So... Anyways, that, that is more general. It's not specific to this map, but it's just a bit about uh, what we sometimes call fence dancing. All right, that was the left side push. And look, from look, from this, this juncture, if you want to as the Union, when it's cap in time, you just use the fence to protect you. And now you can blast away with 42s. Uh, sharp, I mean, heck, sharp. So you shoot with whatever you want. The right side push, it pretty much follows the fence down. You, Go on whatever side you want, and then you, you push through. As the attackers, I never really like pushing deep into areas I cannot see. Sometimes you got to do it, uh, but you're not going to have the element of surprise. I, I don't think if you're bringing a flag with you, and attackers should always have their flags with them, particularly in the late game, as the attackers on this map. The CSA, there are a couple of uh, high points. I think it's actually, yeah, it's over here for the CSA. So if they got an officer out here with binos or just anybody in the chat function, they're going to see the flag moving through the corn. It's not a good idea to send the flag off on a diversion and have it running around out of line where it's going to get killed, lose out of line tickets, and then you can't spawn in on it. Uh, so you, you don't want to try to be too cute about this, but understand that at this point, it's going to be speed more than surprise that matters. Again, if you have 42s, there is a broken stone wall here. For some reason, the CSA likes to be on the stone wall when they know that the Union is coming. Uh, I, I know this, having played the, the, the CSA on this map a number of times, as well as the Union, and, and they just really like being here. I don't really understand why, because it doesn't afford you that much cover in the, the close range fighting that is to come. There are clumps of rocks and upturned trees that are further back here. There's, uh, I, I'm getting a little too into the weeds of it, but there is a, a nice upturned stump over here that I usually like to park myself on. Was that it? I, I don't know. But there's a log pile here. This is not the only one, the more iconic 
frequently use log piles. I think are the twin log piles. Yeah, they're closer to cap. All right, so we have the one that is here. And the CSA will frequently have a flag or two around here, depending on where the union is. You can see there's a little bit of high ground back there. And then there is another log pile. This is pretty much back at, at CSA spawn, which is right there. Uh, and that is some nice hard cover, uh, but that one's a bit far from point to matter. So what the union will do on that right side push is they'll move through the corn. They'll look to gobble folks up. If they want to make some limited forays into the woods, because they you know, think that they can gobble up pockets of CSA who are skirmishing out of line, they can absolutely do that. But my advice on this one is don't hang out because the, the counterplay to all of this is obvious. Just like the counterplay to the CSA or for the CSA over here is to get in that fence and shoot the union as they come down it. Here, the CSA has options. Uh, they can initially start up on this fence, this part of the corn. They can start back in the woods. And as those union flags move through, they can let them move past them. And then they just come in the side or they come in the rear and they can kind of sandwich them between other CSA groups if they know what they're doing. There's uh, there are also down logs. Yeah, there's there it is. Down log, upturned. Uh, you get some visibility, so you shouldn't be too easy to run up on. And you can get sandwiches of the union. You can lose your flags back here. And then you're either down a flag, which makes you almost combat ineffective until it despawns, or you're going to send a bunch of Rambos. And again, as, as CSA, keep maybe a skirmishing group out here to keep eyes on those down flags. You don't need a whole company to do it, uh, but see what's out here and try to pick them off as they come in. The attacker's tickets only ever go down. The center push. The center push is obvious. And uh, okay, so, sorry. I had to mention it. So there is a very little bit of rock hopping. This is the, the set of rocks that are by Union Spawn. Sometimes the Union will run up and, and there tends to be a big kerfuffle over who owns these rocks. Even though these rocks can be surrounded on both sides by the, the Union and the CSA, I would recommend as the Union that you, you want to contest this fence line because if you give it up to the CSA, the CSA will get up here. They will shoot into your spawn. They will shoot, you can come up far enough that you can actually remove the defilade as cover and concealment for the Union. Uh, and you can shoot into the side of the Union as they move through here, and you can harry this this uh, rocky position here. I don't know, people make a lot out of this, uh, and you know, it, it, it is what it is. It's kind of fun to do, I guess, but uh, I'm not sure I understand that because the position can be shot by both sides from these fences, and if you know they get kind of a, a, a concave around you and those rocks, there ain't anywhere to hide. And particularly as the Union, there's nowhere good to retreat. If the CSA has come up alongside of you and, and they're shooting in your back, you, you gotta pull back through a big open field, and that is rough, and that's why I recommend the Union rather stay in, in the snake fence. It's easier and more likely to pull back with, with cover if you do that. But the Union can advance down this road uh, now that we can destroy things with artillery, and even before that, we could finagle the artillery into the road, uh, but you can bring, <laughs> if you want to, you can just bring a cannon down to point. The CSA can never take it because they don't have any arty guys who can grand theft arty it for you. I, I don't think that's really necessary to do on this map. I think you have pretty good default positions uh, as it is, but hey, it's a, it's a late game canister option if you want one. Uh, the counterplay to the Union pushing the left, <laughs> it's exactly the same as when they push on the CSA right. The CSA get long along those fences. They may step back into the corn for concealment, and they will get more shots into the Union than Union will get it shots into them. Uh, they just gotta be in the right position. I, I think a split push is, I understand it, but I, I don't know if that's the, the, the best option for the Union on this map. You could certainly do a, a diversionary push, but uh, I, I would say concentrate, pick a side, try to make it bloody. And uh, if the CSA pulls back too much, this is another one because of the, the features. Sometimes it boggles the mind why there's so many out of lines and skirmishing. These woods are only part of it. The corn is a big part of it as, as well. Uh, but this junction right here with the corn and the fences, the CSA will frequently try to hold because it provides cover and concealment. It's close to point and frankly, losing them is painful. Right? If you lose this corn fence here, the CSA pretty much has to concentrate and try to wipe whatever group or groups are here, wipe them in detail. Uh, we've gone through that in other videos and, and other folks have covered it well, but that, that really is the, the name of the game. So there are a couple of key features on this map. Again, I think it's interesting. It can be cap recap. This is also one of the ones where if it's cap recap and the map goes long, it actually gets quite dark at the end of the map. Like if we start looking at uh, almost a 60 minute map and this, this can do it because of, uh, I think, the ticket balance and, and the cap recap dynamic bailing the defenders out if they fall behind, but also 
uh, allowing the attackers to extend the clock if the CSA decide to turtle up and pull way back. Uh, just so be beware of that, defenders, because when it's dark out, the advantage is probably to the attackers who uh, have numbers. They usually have tickets and uh, they just don't want to get shot on their way in. So that's Eastwood Skirmish, a, a, a great map here on, on War of Rights. Again, really interesting uh, Union small arms selection. And uh, yeah, I hope this helps.